Okay. <clears throat> so, hi everyone. It's uh, September, and we are going to be talking about our redo of the asking, asking questions and developing curiosity exercise. Um, so, before we jump into the uh, sort of a live exercise on this prompt, I wanted to get a sense, uh, just to go around the table and hear from people what they think about uh, the value of asking questions, um, developing curiosity, and we can with particular emphasis on the previous exercise. So I just want to hear uh, hear from different people. Did they find the exercise useful? Do they know why this is interesting or important? Um, you can touch on the QFT, but just maybe five different inputs to get the discussion started. Because we're the reason we're redoing this is our sense by and large is that it wasn't uh, it wasn't well understood. So let's just get five different inputs, please. So put your hands up, don't all put your hands up at once. So how do we how do we get started? I mean, can some, maybe you, somebody can also tell me that we have no idea what the point of this exercise is. Like give me something because this is exactly the type of um, it's exactly the problem that we're often facing. So, thanks. Yeah, go ahead. Let's say, huh? Yeah. Uh, so, this was a really important uh, assignment. And one thing I noticed about myself is I kind of know the the real importance of asking questions, and I I, I thought I was uh, actually, you know, more or less good at asking questions, but now that I know that I, I don't really know how to ask real good questions, I took that really deep for my heart, for myself, and it's something I really uh, want to uh, uh, improve on, you know. But I, I knew I knew that it, it means everything, you know, asking questions and being on the same page. And sometimes I even noticed, even though we might think we are in the same place or in the same page, like, if we don't actually ask these questions and get to the bottom of things, we don't, we don't, we we can't just assume that everybody is on the same page. And it really uh, solves many problems, I think. And yeah, that's my uh, input. That's all. Okay, I'm just gonna project. I'm actually gonna take some notes here. Um, so I'm just gonna project that just before we go to Andanet. Um, Okay, so feedback. It, it was good at asking questions. <clears throat> Type, but now I realize that I <clears throat> am was not, and I have to. Okay, internet, go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah, the curiosity, I believe, uh, is a natural thing that is like, I mean, it's an inherent thing we all have. A human, uh, we all are uh, curious by nature and that this, uh, these innovations and everything that has been like created uh, comes uh, because of like curiosity. So I consider myself a, uh, being a very curious person, I, I often find myself uh, delving into uh, topics, uh, different, different topics, variety of topics, oftentimes. So uh, this, I think, I believe, broaden uh, my knowledge. So uh, we we had a career exercise in uh, uh, called like T-shaped, uh, T-shaped uh, person. So like, uh, curiosity is, I believe, the one that uh, broadens uh, our, like, the T, the horizontal part of our T. So that's a good thing. And also, like, most innovations comes in uh, uh, when people from different uh, background uh, or different, uh, uh, not, uh, different background, like, apply on a different set. So, the hybrid of uh, interdisciplinary uh, different uh, disciplines uh, will lead uh, to some innovation. So, uh, asking a good question is 
uh, I think the driving force or the driver of curiosity. So uh, I I believe QFT technique, I find it like, I haven't known it before, but the QFT technique, I find it very, uh, very constructive way to ask good questions. So uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Okay, thanks. I see Nat Nail, but I want to get uh, two inputs from women in the group, and then we'll take Nat Nail to round us off. Do we have any women on the call? Uh, Gannett is here. Jane Rose is here. Okay, Gannett, go ahead. Okay. Uh... When you come to curiosity, it is, uh, as you say, it is a natural thing, but it is uh, an ability to know, eager to know something, uh, and uh, what is that, and uh, the question which is what, why, and uh, how that is happened uh, is, uh, I think it is related to that of curiosity, and uh, as a whole question, so when to know about something what how it is happened wh why it's happened where it's happened and uh, when uh, that thing is happened is related to that of course that's my understanding thank you okay jane rose um hello hi jane rose um, the careers exercise was interesting to me uh, to be in that headspace of a startup that is currently in its early stages to be able to mold it with the questions that I asked on what kind of cloud platform to use for the business. And um, I think it was just interesting to be in that beginning stages, like to form, form the early the early stages. Yeah. And that now in Malaysia? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and my personal thoughts and belief, I think uh, curiosity is the most important thing with uh, an additional of like having some intellectual questioning abilities, like questioning why things are happening, like being critical, asking critical questions. So as Garnet and Andernet said also, uh, the most important discoveries and inventions came from like the people behind it were so curious about it so like uh, it 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 is an inquiry of like asking a good question is like why is it why is something working and why is uh, something the way it is rather than accepting like the how it is so for example like why do we take the same path to work every day like curiosity starts by that and also uh, the second uh, most important ability is like adaptation so the more we adapt the more we ask questions and the more we answers we get and then we adapt and ask uh, that's how i see curiosity thanks uh okay we have emmanuel that wants to make a contribution and then we'll continue go ahead emmanuel Okay, uh, I just wanted to put some analogy to this. Uh, when uh, asking questions from uh, what I learned from this exercise, I think we should uh, exhibit some uh, kind of an infant characteristic. Um, if you uh, look at infants, they ask questions uh, just out of pure curiosity to know about uh, things they haven't been exposed to before. Mm, they don't consider whether the, they don't know the hierarchy Th they don't ask uh, questions to people that they think would know the answer they just ask they just barely ask mm, so i think when asking questions out of curiosity we should uh, exhibit some kind of uh, infant characteristics yeah no i think that's a good way to frame that um I think this infantile nature is, yeah, it's a nice way to frame it. <clears throat> okay, so I found uh, when looking at some of the submissions that were 
done in the previous time that we did it, there was there was definitely something that was missing. Um, and there's, you know, it's curiosity is important, but we also have to. Um, so why are we here? We're here because we want you to get into work and we want everyone to be successful when they're working. So if you were to show, let's use the example of let's get more specific. Let's get out of the generalities. If you go to if you go to work and you ask your boss uh, on the first day a question about the uh, the work that you're doing, great. Um, but if you continue uh, nonstop following this sort of very blue sky thinking, you'll quickly run out of his or her um, time because they want to actually they're there to get <clears throat> work done, and so are you. And so what we want to uh, what we want to stimulate or give you the capability of is how do you ask relevant questions which are um, relevant in a very selfish way, relevant to you furthering your career. And we say that uh, recognizing that if, you know, the ideal for us is that each of you becomes exceptional through the work that you are doing. So if you're furthering, if you're asking very good questions, and um, you're doing great professional work, that is exactly what employers want because they want people who are, they want to keep learning, they want to keep improving, and they're doing that through their work. So we have to find the right balance of uh, questions, or we have to find questions, the ability to ask good questions which are relevant to the task at hand. So yeah, we don't want to always ask blue sky thinking. I love this idea of the infant que infant questions, and those are questions that we have to ask in moderation. Um, if you ask them all the time, then people will just run out of time. What I found in the previous exercise was that the questions that were asked were very um, simple questions. They were very one-dimensional questions. And the questions, they were mostly closed-ended. And if I'm honest, I think they were mostly, mostly lazy questions. Um, so a good question is actually really hard to form in the same way that it's often been said that it's very hard to write something short in the same way asking a good question is actually a lot more work than asking a not a very good question. Uh, so the questions that I saw were much more, what do you think we should do? Or why should we do this? Or there was no thought put into the actual, uh, there was very few people that actually put thought into this scenario. And uh, that's the type. So we've changed the exercise slightly and we've made it uh, a little bit more relevant to the task at hand because this is, uh, we want the new exercise to be focused on the questions that you ask when you go for a job interview. Um, and what the types of questions that I don't want to see, and we often uh, have these, is people go to a job interview and of course you're nervous and that's normal, but this, these are one of the questions that you, this is one of the areas that you can absolutely prepare for. And you can really, um, it's one of the best ways to show off uh, your preparation, your abilities, and your type of thinking by asking good questions. <clears throat> so I would say very bad questions or the questions we want to avoid are questions like, how many holidays do I get? Um, are you going to get me a MacBook? Um, I don't know. Uh, what is your, do you prefer Slack versus Microsoft Teams? These questions are, in a way it's fine and you probably want to know that at some point, but you're not, you're not learning something which will help you further your career. And so we rather want to ask questions that uh, showcase something that you already know and um, you can kind of reduce the, the frame of options. So going back to the previous example, when we had this scenario that we had created around this choice of Google versus Amazon versus Azure, the types of questions that we wanted to add, that I wanted to see were in the range of, look, we recognize that Amazon's services um, are resident in Africa and or in Uganda. Amazon, let's say Google has a data center in Uganda Amazon and Microsoft don't. Do you have any, are there any requirements from the financial authorities in Uganda that would make it, can you guys hear me? Is there anyone else who can't hear? I think I'm leaning back too far. Is this better, Internet?
I think we can hear. Okay. I think it's from my side if uh, everyone is listening clearly. Okay. Um, and so that, that would be the type of question where one does the research and says, okay, I understand it's a fintech company. There's probably something which is, there will be regulation. And I know that um, Google has a data center in Uganda, Microsoft and Amazon don't. So is that is that a relevant piece of information? So what you've done, and I don't know if uh, Google has a data center in Uganda, I'm just making up the scenario. I, yeah. Um, but you're you're showing that you've done some research and you're also identifying that you've thought about um, the fact that there will be regulation. But the most important thing that you're doing, and this is where I want, it's really, 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 really important to me that everyone here develops this ability. You have shown that you are thinking about the problem from either from the user's side or from your manager's side or from your colleague's side and you're asking questions which are not lazy questions but you've put your mind to it and you've thought about it and now you're asking a question which you've provided information and now you're asking for um, a little bit of feedback or you're asking for guidance on the next step. And it's that type of approach that if you do this consistently, I can guarantee you this is, it's very hard to find. It's very, very hard to find employees who do this. And this is one of the characteristics that I think makes one of the biggest differences between um, people who do okay, people who do well, and people who do, I would say, very well. And developing this as a habit, uh, in my mind, is very important. And the QFT technique, I think, is a good. We actually we didn't know the QFT technique either. We spent a little bit a bit of time looking for um, a formalization of this technique, and it seems fine. I mean, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. It's definitely not the only way to do it, but the technique by itself is fine. Um, but I wanted to talk today just to emphasize how important it is. This is not a make work exercise, and there's you know you need there's some things that are useful at one point in your career, for example, making a CV, you absolutely need to do it, but you're not going to be making a CV every day. But practicing asking good questions is something that I think you'll be using every day. Um, this last point that I wanted to make, and I think this will be increasingly relevant, as complexity increases in an organization, um, and by definition, we're working in complex fields. If you're going into an AI team, a Web3 team, by and large, your manager, your manager's managers, your colleagues, everyone's operating with uncertainty. Nobody exactly knows what's in the data. How long will it take us to build a system? What are the users going to do? Um, what's the right pricing? What's the right approach? What are our competitors going to do? We're operating in areas of uncertainty. And I think as you guys go on in your careers, you're probably going to be moving into areas of increasing uncertainty, not decreasing uncertainty. And therefore, always having your minds open to not only um, what's directly in front of you, but almost more. Um, and so there's, Yevaba and I talked two or three years ago about we, you know, many of, many of the programs that you might have considered when you were going to school um, probably talk about problem solvers. And our goal, and this is one of the one of the reasons why we have this exercise and we have to do a lot more on it is we actually don't want problem solvers. We think problem solvers are insufficient. What we're looking for are problem identifiers. Can somebody tell me what they think the difference between a problem solver and a problem identifier is? I think I have a very idea. Can go I go ahead. on? Yeah. So the really hard parts of uh, managing an institution are not the ones that we can see, that we can identify, because if you can see an error, if it's on the log, if it's in the data, anyways, if you can see it, there, there are so many people out there who can actually solve it. But the ones that are really bad are the ones that we cannot see, or that happen intermittently, or that happen in, oh, uh, order or no frequency. So being able to identify those is by far the most important thing, I think, that can give uh, companies uh, time, fortune, and many things. 
Anyone else want to make a contribution to that? I think I saw Emmanuel's hand up. Gennett, go ahead. Okay. Um, problem solver is already the problem is identified and ready to be solved. Just uh, already known known problems, but problem identifiers is finding out from the situations or from the surrounding, find out the problems which makes that organizations may need to uh, be content or something like that. That's yeah. my understanding. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think you're both speaking, yeah, you're, you've both touched on the same point and it's the right point. A problem solver is solving a problem which somebody else has identified. A problem identifier looks at the same information and looks at the context and says, if we continue to do this, then perhaps in two months, we this might emerge. So we should already start thinking about it. So yeah, I think there's many examples of how this has happened uh, in the world of business. There's a famous example, you guys are probably too young, but in the late 90s, Microsoft thought the internet was done. Microsoft thought the internet was going to be a private internet. And it was basically going to be a little bit like Facebook is now where you have closed networks. And in the late 90s, Microsoft had nothing to do with the internet. They had lost the internet game. Um, and they could not react. Uh, they didn't react fast enough. And it was only when other companies like Google came up um, that Microsoft realized they had missed the boat. And if somebody had done this identification to say, we think that we're winning and the data may show us that, but actually, even if it's very small, the growth of the internet business and where the technology is moving, this is an area that we need to think about. Um, that to me is a problem identifier. And that's a very big example, but there's many other smaller examples. When you guys go to work, you may be faced with, maybe you're doing fraud detection and thinking about if we continue to do what we're doing, this is an issue that might emerge. Or the way that we're structuring our team right now, we're missing an important point of feedback. There's a voice at the table which is not there. And if we don't consider this voice, there's something which we're not uh, addressing or that we're not thinking about. So always having that in the back of your mind and framing questions in that way um, I think is is very, very important. So that's, if there's one thing that I want you to take out of uh, this exercise, and I think even a, a cultural approach that you take out of this training, do not be content with solving the problems that somebody else has identified. Ask good questions, which will help you to identify problems which will be emerging in the future. And I believe that that is one of the characteristics that will be um, along with hard work and being nice to people. I think if you can do those three things, and maybe the fourth one, which is the hardest one, is being mentally flexible enough to say, actually, I said, uh, I took position A last week and I was wrong. I now believe in position B. If you put vo those four things together, so hard work, helping others in the community, being very curious and asking good questions, and being ment mentally flexible enough to admit that what you thought last week is no longer true this week. Those are some characteristics that are important. So let's uh, pause now, take some questions, and then I wanted to do a live exercise uh, where we're gonna jump into this spreadsheet and we're gonna do the brainstorming of 30 questions uh, together. So any questions? No? Okay. So I'm just going to share this uh, right here. And I want to come up with a prompt. I'm just going to share this here so you guys can all log in. And uh, we're going to do. I'm just going to write it up here, long list of questions, type of question, open or closed, um, proceed with this question, and improved question. Okay. 
second here. I can see that somebody has typed uh, typed something or put their hand up, but I can't hear it yet. So just give me a second. Um, Okay, uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to write up a prompt, but uh, okay. Anana, go ahead. Uh, I had a really bad internet connection, so I lost the majority of what you've said. So can you please uh, recap uh, what you've said and uh, one or two sentences for short, <laughs> short recap? So basically, the most important thing I can say is that I think asking good questions will help you not only to be reactive, but will help you to understand asking good questions and being curious will help you to uh, figure out what's actually going on. And so one example that I have of that is that you have a, your manager gives you a set of data, but the very curious person will say, okay, I have this data in front of me and I can analyze that, but is there any data that's missing? And if it's missing, why is it missing? So maybe it's, you know, you're analyzing, uh, yeah, you're analyzing financial data or you're analyzing website uh, traffic data, but you realize that you don't have the sales data. And so why is that data missing? Or if you, um, that's just one example. And the, re the reason uh, that it's important to do that is you don't want to be just a problem solver. You want to be a problem identifier. A problem solver is somebody who is given a scenario and is asked to solve that problem. And that's good. But a problem identifier is somebody who can go to a meeting and say, if we continue to do what we're doing, um, we are going to end up in this place which is desirable or undesirable, or if we're going to end up with this problem. And so that's the type of person, that's the type of culture that we want to inculcate within all of our training. So that's one. And then the second point that I made was, I think the four characteristics that I've seen, which are important, uh, which lead to long-term success in your career. One is this curiosity and asking good questions. And it's rare. Most people kind of just show up and ask, they don't even ask questions. They just say, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. So that's one. Uh, hard work, being nice to other people and contributing to the community. Um, and there was, and then there was being willing to accept that your whatever position the mental flexibility to say what i thought was right last week i now believe that it was wrong and that mental flexibility to adapt yeah okay so i'm going to post this link but first i need to come up with a good prompt so does somebody want to come up with a prompt question so we're going to do this exercise we're going to long list lots and lots of uh, questions, or maybe it's even a scenario. We're going to long list a bunch of questions and then we're gonna classify them as open or closed and then we're gonna pick five improved ones. And so actually I have a good scenario. I have, I have to tell you guys a secret. Um, we didn't come up with this exercise. This came up in batch four because our trainees told us that they didn't know how to ask good questions. So yeah, this the prompt is, what questions uh, so how do I build uh, my first T uh, the Algorand blockchain question being posed? To... Okay, so I'm going to post the link here and I want everyone to log in and just start uh, typing up. Let's do our long list of 30 questions and then we're going to improve them together. And um, yeah, so we're, let's, we're going to use the QFT technique. We want to improve the questions. They should be open-ended. Um, and the whole point is that we want to come up with questions which will help us um, address these questions, address this fast enough. So let's take five minutes and do that. So don't all type in the same place, just go down. 
I'll take care of the formatting and the improving. So just type up your questions. So we want to see lots of questions coming out. So I'm going to be classifying these as open or closed. I'm just going to be uh, bolding ones that sound already look good. Um, but just type, guys. Remember, brainstorming, the whole point of brainstorming is you don't think too much. You just type, and that process warms you up. So we got uh, two minutes left. Don't worry about formatting. Don't worry about making it beautiful. We don't have a lot of questions here, guys. I'm a bit surprised. Should we be banging these out? But please don't replace stuff that other people are typing. So go down to the bottom of the list. Go to the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. There's lots of space at the bottom. So all of you guys who are typing up top, you should move down. So let's keep going. Let's take two more minutes. So, Mohammed. Uh, no, it's fine. If you don't have access to the laptop, that's not uh, right in the chat box. Okay, so we have some questions around why Algorand uh, app versus DApp. Um, Algorand have a front end. What is the programming language? Yeah. Yeah. Why Algorand? Yeah. Okay, so we need a D app or a simple app. <clears throat> uh, so these are, I think, generally open-ended questions. So this is a closed-ended question. Is it possible to have the answer is yes or no? Why do we need a D app? It's very open-ended. Um, 
you like this question, uh, so this is an open one. Uh, this is open as well. Um, I think these are some really good questions. So let's so let's stop typing uh, any new ones. And what I'm going to ask now everyone to do is to take the ones that have been bolded, and let's <clears throat> let's improve those ones that have been bolded. So there's a set of ones that I've put into bold. Uh, let's try to, and it's actually going to be difficult, so hold on a second if everyone's typing at the same time. Um, let's actually go through them one by one. Um, da, da, da. So let me just tidy this up. And so how can I configure the algorithm blockchain? So what's an improved question that we can work on here? How can we improve this question? Does somebody want to take a stab at improving this one? Maybe ask details about uh, what software development kits we are we need to uh, have in order to so do, so our so Fisesha, why why don't you just so you can start typing in there. So, so uh, we'll take this one. Who wants to take uh, work on number 11? Somebody put their hand up and volunteer to work on number 11. Who wants to try and improve number 11? So just put your hand up if you want to do it. So we want to try and make these more open-ended. We want to think a step deeper. So not now, Melissa is going to do number 11. Who wants to do number 17? If we can't change the features after we've deployed the apps, why are we still choosing Web3? Who wants to improve on this one? Somebody put up their hand and volunteer, please. Okay, MT Nan, we'll do that one. So MT Nan did a great job on the first uh, first round of this assignment. I thought her questions were all very well done. So I think she's somebody you guys can ask. Uh, she's a person that a resource you guys should utilize. Uh, number nineteen. What are the characteristics of a good D app? Who wants to take care of that one? So just put your hand up and volunteer. Andanet Alexander, okay. So just, I, I'm looking for you guys to type, and maybe it's not showing up because you guys are busy typing. Number 20, uh, we have, who's next in the queue? Uh, Wangui, so Wangui is gonna do this one then. Okay. Number 22, what are the top platforms or tools to build a DApp? Who wants to do that one? Can somebody volunteer? Jane Rose, thank you. Number 25, important differences between app and DApp. So Emmanuel. We have four more. So we're looking for four volunteers. So I'm actually just gonna pick people out because uh, I think there's some people hiding here. So Patrick has number 34. Uh, that's for Patrick. We have uh, Adijat is going to take uh, number 43, please. We have uh, Josias, number 75, please. 
at uh, number 35. Let's give that one to Neo Mukiza. All right, yeah. Okay, so let's just go and spend two minutes trying to improve the questions. Fisesh has done his, Fisesh has done his. Uh, we have number 17 has done there. So let's just take a moment here, wait for them, give them some time to finish. Can I ask? Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Uh, I want to know what we have to exactly do because my, my network has been ups and down a little bit. So, can you? So, I'd like you to take uh, this question uh, Does Algorand have a front end development environment and improve the question? We're using the QFT. And so your job is to take that and we want to ask an open-ended question, a good question, a question which gives us as much information as possible. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. So we just have 12 minutes left. Um, so let's take two minutes and just wrap up the, the improved questions and we'll walk through them one by one. Um, and while we're waiting for people to type, so there's a there's an imp there's a prompt which is there uh, in the updated challenge, and so the prompt is very related to what you will face uh, regularly in the supported job search phase. And so what we're looking for are that you do research on the role, you do research on the people who work at the company, you do research on the co-founder in the simulated scenario, and you come up with. 30 long list questions and five really good questions which are relevant to the company to the role and to the person okay so i'm going to start walking through the questions one by one so how can i configure the original question was how can i configure the algorand blockchain with back and front end applications the improved questions are what are the back end and front end software developing tools that we're using now and is there any current algorand STK that we can integrate um, with that. Yeah, I mean, there may be ways that we can make this uh, a little bit, we can think about it, or do we want to limit ourselves to just an algorand STK? Do we want to use third-party SDKs if any exist? Um, you're saying which tools are we using now, but um, you could also open that up and say, which tools are we using now or what, which tools could we be using? Because sometimes there's a tendency in a company to use, because there's a React expert, then React's the only tool that people are willing to think about. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's good, and that's definitely better than uh, the original question. Are there any D apps that are hosted that provide the same functionality? Improved question is, what are the primary flaws of the earlier similar D apps that we can use to improve our D app? Yeah, I think that's a, really really good question um very good so we talk about we uh, we're looking to build on uh, the successes and the failures and also to identify the similar d app so i would if i was yavabel or a manager i'd love to get that question 
if we can't change the features after we've deployed the dApps, why are we still choosing Web3? Um, yeah, I think that's a really good question as well, given the goal that we're trying to achieve. How do we evaluate the pros and cons of choosing a dApp instead of a normal app? Great question. Um, and if we had a little bit more information, if we were talking about a dApp for a DAO or uh, for money transfer or for a percentage ownership, then we can get even more specific. What are the characteristics of a good dApp? Uh, updated question is what characteristics are you looking for your dApp to exhibit? Um, yeah, I think this actually this question is a little bit hard to deal with. Um, the, it's still, uh, yeah, I'm wondering how much information we would get out of that, but maybe that's the furthest we can go, so that one is fine. Why do you build your dApp in the Algorand blockchain? Improved question from Wangui, uh, I think still being typed. <laughs> What are the top platforms to build dApps? Uh, what are the current industry standards in Web3? Um, I think that's fine, Jane Rose, but that's too broad. And so remember, a good question is you want to show that you've understood what the client is looking for. And so this, you know, I think it's generalizing it too much. So if so you, are asked, you were to ask Gabriel, what are the current industry standards in Web3? That's a huge question. Um, and it may not be relevant to solving um, the issue at hand. So I think this is too open-ended. Um, that's the sort of blue sky thinking. That's more if you go to have a drink after work or you're at a conference, that's the type of question that you should be asking. What's the most important difference between an app and a dApp? Um, so you're answering the question differently is that dApps are decentralized. What it, what exactly is a decentralized application from this challenge's perspective and what makes it so efficient? So I think that's almost a great question. I think uh, talking about the, you're trying to figure out why do we want to decentralize and what's the business aspect of the decentralization, which makes it really useful. And so I, I would like that question to really pop out a manual. Um, does Algorand have a front end development environment? Um, Patrick, which front end framework can we use that are suitable for dApps? in Algorand. Yeah, I think that's fine. You could add, make it specific to Algorand. Um, and I think, so it's suitable for this uh, use case on the Algorand blockchain, Patrick, would be what I would add to this. What exactly is, is the Algorand's programming language, Neo Mukiza? Which features of Algorand are we going to use, given that Algorand this technology is used for different purposes? Um, so I feel like you've missed the so Neo Mikiza, I think you've missed the point because we want to figure out which programming language does Algorand operate in and which one should we be using? Because now we're talking about the implementation. So you've now changed the question. So you haven't added to the question or improved it, you've changed the question. So we didn't want to do that. Um, why do we have to use Algorand? Why not any other blockchain? Um, yeah, I think this question is good. Does, Algorand, does the Algorand blockchain offer some particular benefits or features um, that is relevant to the dApp. We could make it a little bit different and say, we know that every blockchain has some particular benefits or features. So which benefits or features that are relevant? And one of the things that all of you know about Algorand or you'll find out on Friday is that Algorand is the quote unquote green blockchain. It's very, that's their credential and it's pure proof of stake so that you don't have this proof of work, which is hugely energy consuming. So asking the question about how that's relevant could also be important. And the last one, um, what really is our requirement? Do we need a D app or a simple app? Uh, this might be a repeat, that's my mistake. And so Usias asks, why are we gonna build a D app instead of an app? So yeah, that, that's an okay question, but again, that's, it's not really, you're not getting a huge amount more information. Um, so I would, if we had a little bit more information in the scenario, you see us, we could ask a little bit more about that. Why, um, you know, talking about the decentralization, what are some of the opportunities? And you could even talk about some of the trade-offs. So we have, um, I think we've come up with a reasonable list of questions working together. Wangui has finished uh, the question. Uh, Polygon ability. Yeah, so this is this is a great question. I love this. It kind of, we get into details and you've done some research. You talk about Polygon, you talk about Ethereum, you could talk about uh, the green credentials, pure proof of stake, speed, throughput uh, on Algorand, and now talk about, okay, so which one is actually uh, most important to us? 
so with that um i guess that's the end of a brief walk through this exercise i just wanted to summarize the most important points are that the QFT is one way to ask good questions, but the importance of asking good questions cannot be overstated. And so developing this mindset or this characteristic is extremely important. And so I would encourage everyone um, to do that. And if you have any questions, um, again, this is uh, something that I, I'm happy to spend hours and hours and hours with people on because that's it's that mindset it's the mindset is more important than any python sql um, programming that you learn so i don't think we have a huge amount of time but uh so reach out to let me know you can use the careers channel to let me know or if there's a, a real request then reach out to uh, emilienne abdullahi everest if we want to have another q a session um, on this yeah so any questions in the last three minutes because we want to finish on time any comments i see hands are they supposed to be i think or? i think that's from before but i could be wrong to say how under net mt9 i think it's from uh, the kind of volunteering that we were doing before. You came in just after we finished the exercise using your name, so I'm glad that I stopped presenting. Otherwise, you would uh, you would try and charge a licensing fee. But are there any questions? We have two minutes. Any questions on asking questions? Patrick, and then Neil Makiza. So, uh, I want to ask a question about, it's not about this question, I know if I can go ahead. Oh. So, um, recently I was Googling about um, the cryptocurrency, and I saw uh, they say uh, you, can, you can mine, you can mine the cryptocurrency. Is it worth uh, doing, because I, I saw people investing money buying computers, is it worth doing it? Like kind of question. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I mean, Yevabel can give you a better answer to that question than I can. So uh, I'll let him answer that. I didn't hear properly actually the question. He, he, was, he was asking, is it, he read on the internet or he Googled that uh, you can make money by mining crypto and is it worth doing it? Um, depends uh, i think it's it's the simple answer probably is a normal single player is gonna really struggle and then um, i think it's just the main reason is that especially because there are so much people who have established farms that does this slightly better and so you might struggle to achieve. Um, but from, I, I think in, in, in very simple terms, probably not at this point. Um, yeah. But the technology, understanding the technology, running it, and I think that's also important. Um, so in some way it's, uh, yeah, it, it, I haven't done it and therefore I can't tell you um, what really, whether it's actually profitable but definitely single players will will find it hard and the return will not be definitely in a few months it could be like if you run it in a year you might be lucky and then I, one luck might just compensate but you know maybe, maybe an analogy patrick is it's like mining cryptocurrency might be like mining for gold if you're a single player that goes out with a shovel you might get lucky but if you're up against a huge company that has uh, big equipment, they're more likely to find gold. Of course, they've invested a lot more, but yeah, I would say that's that's the analogy that uh, builds on what you have well said. Okay, last question, then we're out of time. Neo Makiza. So I, 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 you've talked that a lot about curiosity and power.
uh, how I can't hear you. Yeah, your your Hello? connection is not very good. Yeah, could you re could you restart your question? I couldn't hear the start of it. Uh, I said to you uh, talked about and. Um, I can't hear. I don't know if anyone else can hear. I'm only hearing 10%. Yeah, well, can you hear her? I think it's. Uh, uh, sorry, it's sorry. My, uh, sorry, I will type the question. Could you type it on Slack? Because I, I'm going to drop off the meeting now because I think there's a tutorial. So could you type okay. it on Slack? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure, 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 thanks. So why don't we stop the recording and then restart just so there's two different videos. Uh, Emilian? Yeah, I should stop recording. Stop and then restart. All right, thanks everyone.